Okay, there's some more um, theorems in your ebook in section 2.4 if you want to uh, check those out. The division algorithm, the remainder theorem, and the factor theorem. We're going to talk about some of them now. And uh, the first one we're going to look at is the remainder theorem. It says if you have a polynomial and you divide it by x minus c, then the remainder is the same as f evaluated at c. So let's see what that means. It's telling us if we take, it's telling us to evaluate, they give us a polynomial, and it says evaluate the function at negative 2. Right here, they tell us evaluate this function. Use synthetic division and the remainder theorem. So first of all, let's just do um, our remainder theorem. Plug that in. Everywhere there, there is an x, let's put a parenthesis. And we're going to plug in negative 2. Evaluate this function at negative 2. So negative 2 cubed is uh, negative 8. Minus, uh, times 2 is negative 16. And we get minus 24 here. Add that all up. Let me see. You can add this however you want. We get negative 19 as our answer. You could add those in different orders. So basically when we evaluate the function, we get negative 19. Now let's do synthetic division with this. All right, set up your synthetic division and then work that. Okay. When we look at synthetic division and we work it out, we see that the remainder is negative 19, which was in fact the same thing that we got when we evaluated the function at that point. Now, that's what this remainder theorem says. If you divide that, then the remainder is going to be the same thing that you would get if you evaluated the function at C. So, that's one of the theorems we look at. The next theorem we're going to look at is the factor theorem. It says, okay, we're dealing with the polynomial function. If the f evaluated at c, which we just did, equals 0, then we know that x minus c is a factor. If x minus c is a factor of f of x, then we know f of c equals 0. So basically these two are um, the reverse thought of the other, okay? Let's look at these and see exactly what that means by an example. Use synthetic division to divide this out, and then use the result to find all the zeros of f. Okay, we're going to write it in descending order. 1, 15, 71, 105. There's no missing terms. When it's in this format of the x plus format, remember that's when we do the opposite. Find the, use the results to find all the zeros. So let's uh, pause it and do synthetic division. Okay, with synthetic division, we work this out, we get a remainder of zeros. So the conclusion to that says, obviously x plus 7 is a factor of this because it had a remainder of zero. Now, what's left over? So we know x plus 7 is a factor. What's going to be left over? If this was x to the third, what's our solution start with? x squared, x. So what I'm left with is x squared plus 8x plus 15. Well, I know one of the zeros from this one because we just found that. What can I do with this to keep going to find all of them? We can rely, since it's an x squared and it's something we're familiar with, we can rely on our... Um, complete our bottoms up method or factor however you prefer to do what multiplies to give us 15 but adds to give us 8 x plus 3 and x plus 5 and you can go off to the side and use bottoms up if you need to I'm dropping down the x plus 7 okay we're looking for the zeros so when we set this equal to 0 when you set this one equal to 0 what do you get negative 7. Good. What do you get here? Negative 3 and what about here? 
Yes, so your zeros you would just list as negative 7, negative 3, negative 5. The next theorem we're going to introduce is your rational zero theorem or rational root theorem. It gives you all the possible rational roots of a polynomial equation. But not every number will be a zero, but every zero will be in the list. Okay, and that's confusing. In just a minute, I'll see if I can um, make some sense of that for you. The idea is we take the factors of the constant term and divide it by the factors of the leading coefficient. Okay, so basically, um, your factors of your constant term, let's do this in blue. Uh, let's look at the constant term, which is this. Constant term is going to be 14. And the leading coefficient term, what's our leading coefficient term? This is our leading coefficient term, uh, term leading coefficient um, is going to be a 1 because the coefficient of that leading term is 1. So we write our constant term and on the bottom we have our leading coefficient term and we want all the factors. Tell me every possible way you can multiply to get 14. 1 times 14 and I'm going to put them in order. Um, and what's the other way to get 14? 2 and 7, and I always just put the plus and minus because it gives both. Now, um, I just like to line them up in order, not that it's incorrect if you don't, but it's... And the only way to get 1 is plus or minus 1, 1 times 1. So the idea is that we're going to take these and break it into all the possible factors, and then now we need to simplify it. I would divide this by 1, and you still just get plus or minus 1, divide by 1, divide by 1, divide by 1. This one simplifies very easy. They're not all. If this was a, a different number, I may have some fractions in there. So my possible real roots are going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 7, plus or minus 14. If I try to explain this a little better, if I gave you an x to the fifth function, at this particular one right here, and I ask you to tell me, find all the zeros, well prior to this class, all you were able to do is maybe an x squared function because then you can either do the quadratic formula or you can do um, bottoms up method. But whenever I start giving you x to the third and x to the fourth, essentially you haven't really had a tool until today. I could do synthetic division to it and see if I get zero as a remainder, right? So like this, when I did plug negative seven in and I use synthetic division, I was like, oh wow, yes, I found a zero because my remainder is zero. Um, but in our particular case, when they tell us nothing to start with, they didn't say, hey, try negative 7. They didn't give us anything to start with. Technically, let's say I have anything in the world to start with. I can pick negative 1, positive 1, negative 100, negative 500, and I could just do this and do this and do this until I fi find all the roots, and that's just a lot of effort. So this theorem in particular says, okay, Let's narrow this down to the pool and we'll say if you take the factors of the constant term and the factors of the leading coefficient term all right here, then this is all the possible ones. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus, not a 3, I don't know, um, plus or minus 7 and plus or minus 14. So instead of us now being way out here in, um, infinite land of many, many, many choices, we now have these. So our answers, the roots to our equation, are within here. Not every single one of them are going to be a zero, but the only ones that are possible are in there. So we just went from this big, huge area of anything to sit there and try to find the zeros with to now we're working with a lot smaller group of numbers. And now at this point, it's just basically trial and error. I'll try positive 1, synthetic division. If I get my remainder to be 0, yes, I found 1. 
if I didn't, I scratch it and I try negative one. And then I try two, and I try negative two. But these, uh, this group, this guessing group, this possible real root is clearly much smaller. It gives you a place to start.